Hey, what's up, everybody? This is the Woman to It Two here again. Uh, today we're going to be looking at a uh, an older an older HP uh, Media Center PC. Um, so the what's going on with this PC is uh, it'll just randomly shut off after a couple of minutes, um, and there doesn't really seem to be any reason why. Um, I've uh, swapped out power supplies, swapped out RAM, all kinds of things, and I just can't um, seem to figure out the problem until I notice one thing, and so. Because of that one thing, I'm going to make a video about it because it's um, it's it's an alluring factor that you might not notice in um, uh, pr old pre-built PCs like this. Um, so, kind of one of the reasons I'm deciding to, you know, fix this is one is it belongs to a friend. My friend asked me to fix it, and two, it's actually a halfway decent PC. I mean, it's it's a little bit old, but um, it came with came preloaded with Windows Vista. It's got a dual core. Um, AMD 64-bit processor. Um, the graphics card is, you know, not that great, but um, for just a media center PC, it's, it's perfectly fine. It's also got a uh, capture card, as you can see here, for uh, capturing, um, for making home movies and things like that. It's got a built-in wireless card, and the sound card has a built-in uh, surround sound audio, so um, not a uh, really powerful PC, but overall it's not bad. So um, I'll go ahead and take it apart and uh, we'll have a look inside. All right, so I've got the motherboard taken out here. Um, and uh, as you can see here, uh, we have these capacitors and actually if you look closer, um, they're actually leaking, they're bulging on top and there's a few on this side as well. So, So if you look here beside the processor, you can see that this one's actually just, you know, leaking crap out of the top of it, and uh, these are all bulged. Um, these larger ones here don't seem to be, don't seem to have any issues. I'm not saying they don't, because you can't always tell by that, but these look to be okay just physically. Um, but these four here are definitely bulging out. And if we sw swing around here, beside the uh, express port, you can see that these two here are bulging. And then over here by the RAM, we've got this one here is bulging, and then we've got these two here are bulging as well. So that's a total of nine capacitors that we need to replace uh, in hopes that um, we can get this motherboard up and running again. And uh, that's the unfortunate thing about these um, prefab computers. Uh, they just use cheap parts on their, on their electronics and um, you just don't get the performance and the reliability out of them that you do with a uh, with custom built stuff. So, uh, so what we're gonna do? We're gonna try to revive this motherboard. So, I've uh, just got some uh, capacitors here to replace them with. Um, these all these nine capacitors that I've showed you, these are all 6.3 volt, 1800 microfarad capacitors. So, um, we'll go ahead and desolder all of them, and we'll install new ones. All right, so on the bottom of the motherboard here, I went ahead and marked all the places where the capacitors are that we need to get rid of. So I'm um, just put a little black Sharpie mark here beside these two points here, and we're, that's what we're going to desolder. Um, so I want to go ahead. And, uh, I want to get a good uh, soldering surface here. I want to clean away any any garbage or oxidation or whatever off these pins, so that we can get a good heat transfer if at all possible because these are uh, these pins are kind of small but I believe we can do it so I'm going to try to add some solder to these first to kind of beef them up so I can uh, use my uh, soldering plunger Don't seem to be getting a good, a good heat transfer. It's a possibility it's oxidized. So what I'm doing right now is I've got my hand underneath 
underneath where I can uh, hold the capacitor. And as I heat up the joint, I just gently pull one side out at a time. Just a little bit at a time. Definitely don't wanna break anything. And the capacitor will eventually come out. Like that. There's our capacitor. So you can see that is a 6.3 volt, 1800 microfarad. So at this point, what we want to do is we want to go ahead and flux these. And we need to get rid of the solder inside the vias here so that we can actually um, insert our new capacitor. So I'm going to attempt to do that with my uh, soldering plunger here. All right, so I finally got those two vias cleared out. So um, in this situation, what I had to do is I had to take my plunger and go in from um, the top of the motherboard. And while heating one of these vias up, I would suck the solder out through uh, the opposite side of the, of the board. So um, that's one way you can do it. Um, if you have a, uh, a larger surface area that you can heat up, a lot of times you can just pull it straight off from the same side you're soldering, but in this case I couldn't. I had to, I had to do it from the opposite side. But uh, as you can see, these two are now clear. So we'll take a, uh, some alcohol and a Q-tip and we'll uh, clean the flux off these two you guys here so we get a good clean surface okay. and we will take our uh, new capacitor here and we'll go ahead and install it onto the top of the motherboard we've got the capacitor in place now so we'll go ahead and add some flux to these two guys like that and we'll go ahead and put and uh, solder them in place. So, just kind of do this. There's one. It's not a very good. It's not a very clean joint, but we'll fix it up. Here's the other. There we go, that's a little bit better. There's still a little bit too much solder on there. So I'm gonna try to clean it up. It's not that. Now we'll clean up our work area with some alcohol and a Q-tip. So what I like to do is I like to get down with some reading glasses or a magnifying glass and just inspect the work since it is kind of small here. Um, so let me do that real quick and uh, we'll continue. Alright, so it turns out I didn't quite have a good enough solder joint on this uh, joint right here. So I went ahead and touched it up again. I uh, just made absolutely sure it's, um, it's perfect. So I'm going to go ahead and clean up the flux here one last time. So that joint is now done. Uh, we just have to do the rest of the uh, the other eight capacitors, and uh, we'll go ahead and uh, test the computer and see if it'll stay on for uh, any lengthy amount of time. So I went ahead and got all the uh, capacitors uh, soldered back in now. So that was a total of nine capacitors that need to be replaced. Now um, up here next to the uh, ports, there are these three big ones. They don't they look okay. Um, but there's really no way for me to tell if they're, if they're actually okay or not since I don't have an ESR meter. Um, it's, it's hard to say. Um, there's also a lot of really small capacitors over here. There's a couple of smaller ones 
around the other around the um, motherboard itself um, and they all looked okay too so I went ahead and left those in there um, hoping that those don't need to be replaced as well since you know since again I don't have an ESR meter can't really say for sure um, but yeah I got went ahead and um, reinstalled those capacitors and um, definitely has a little bit of trouble with it um, I do believe that, the, that this motherboard is using a, a lead free solder so uh, it's, you know it uses a higher uh, melting temperature and it doesn't mix really well with leaded solder like I was using so I was I definitely had some issues with it um, but it wasn't too bad I was able to get the, the hardest part was was when you removed the capacitor was getting the vias cleared out so that you could actually put a new put the new part in there um, it's probably the most difficult part but um did okay uh, took a little bit of extra time but not bad uh, but anyway uh, we'll go ahead and um, I'll go ahead and put the heat sink back on and we'll go ahead and get it installed back in the case and uh, we'll go ahead and test it out so I've got everything set up here on the bench just to test it out make sure it's working um, so it's been on for about I don't know two or three hours now and um, it's unfortunately it's running Windows Vista but uh, it's it's stayed on for the past two or three hours and it seems to be working great um, so the uh, recap and the motherboard with those uh, those, those failed capacitors uh, seems to have definitely um, resolved the issue so hopefully we don't, this motherboard doesn't have any other problems with the capacitors um, I am kind of worried about these three large ones right here um, I mean they look fine but I just kind of have a sneaking suspicion that they they might go bad but I mean who it's, it's really hard to tell without an ESR meter um, but at any rate so um, yeah it's uh, it's running fine so uh, I'll go ahead and put it back in the case. All right, guys. So there you go. Uh, again, I just I put everything back in the case. I fired it up, and it's burning great. So um, uh, yeah, it's just fixed it from a friend, and uh, the only thing uh, wrong with it is that the motherboard needs to be recapped. Um, not your not your traditional or conventional repair job here. Um, anybody else would have probably thrown the motherboard away and just replaced the computer. Um, and such is the case with pre-built PCs unfortunately but um, if you know what you're doing you can repair a, uh, a motherboard with um, failing, cap failing capacitors so uh, yeah there we go it's running fine hope you guys learned something here today you don't always have to uh, uh, throw your pre-built PC out if it, uh, if it quits working you just kind of have to have a little bit of know-how and, um, and sometimes you can get things working again so uh, hope you guys enjoyed the video thanks for watching